Yeah. Then quickly go through this one. Easy. That's a good hand. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, without wasting time, let's start. Let's do a question. Uh, first question. Fair share settlement. Fine. So, this question was done? Was it done? I actually gave it to you. आप सॉल्व नहीं किया आप नहीं दिया ये मैंने सॉल्व नहीं किया अभी बट ओके लेट्स डिस्कस इट ओके हाँ या फाइन सो दिस क्वेश्चन सेस यू एंड के ऑफ़ फ्रेंड्स कैदर फॉर अ डिनर एट अ रेस्टोरेंट एंड द टोटल बिल यू सुपर सेंट फाइन यू पे द एंटायर बिल एंड सिंस एवरीवन शेयर्ड द फूड इक्वल ये द बिल नीड्स � your friend should reimburse their fair shares. Each person pays you back. However, if the amount paid back wasn't an integer, fine. They round down to the previous integer value. So, for example, if each friend should have paid 13.2, they should pay 13, fine. So, but then basically, they are paying the TIF, right? British integer function of that number. Correct? Mm -hmm. Questions oh, have NDI, yeah. KDI, you have to find out. So, this is quite yeah. easy, right? Question is yes, man. But GIF को हमको कैसे देना है, right? For example, हाँ, तो इसका होगा 500 by two करें, divided by two या by two because we have one of your friend and one by you, so it's two. ये 999 by ten. हाँ, okay. 999 by ten. I think we understood the question wrong. Let's read the question again. And yeah, the net amount, net amount you paid, okay. You have to find your amount, right? So here it's very clear, right? Yeah. Nine eighty nine by ten, right? It's how much? It's ninety. So ninety rupees were paid by each of your friend, correct? So, so uh -huh. you have nine friends. Nine into nine, nine into ninety is how much? Nine to ninety, eight hundred ten, right? So, how much will you pay? 999 minus 810. Yeah, 99 divided by 10. I'm so sorry. Yeah, 99 should be 99. So, 99 into 9 is probably 81901, right? Not sorry. It's 881, right? 891. Now, triple nine minus 891 is 108. Correct. Similarly, the last one, if you see, quite easy. You have four friends, right? So, one rupee should be shared by four friends. So, total is five, right? So, zero, everyone will pay zero. So, one minus four into zero is how much? One. One. So, the formula is what? The formula says, what is the formula? Huh. N minus N upon K plus one. N minus N by K plus 1. Simple. And if you're using C plus plus for Java, N by K plus 1 will by default be an integer rounded up to the lowest integer. Correct. Quite an easy question. I hope this is clear to everyone. Okay. Moving on to the next question. Am I audible? Yes, we are audible. So yeah, this question says here, you are trying to be more healthy, fine, and thus you have decided to eat only fruits. You have lots of fruits of different types. You tend to be more healthy and thus you have decided to eat only fruits. You have lots of fruits of different type and but you get bored of a specific fruit type very quickly. Fine. So you never repeat fruit types that you ate. Fine. You eat most one fruit of each type. That's very obvious. And you have N fruits, diet, fruit of being type AI, providing you nutrition value of BI. Fine. Some fruits are rotten, so BI can be negative. Okay, fine. Find the maximum possible sum of nutrition values of the fruits you eat. 
and the constraint of never repeating the fruit types so i think this question is quite clear right uh, we have different varieties of fruit out of which we eat we eat one fruit from each variety correct so we have to find out the uh-huh. we have to find out find out the maximum, maximum possible, possible nutrition value right okay fine so the question says the n is the number of fruits second n contains the type of fruits and the third n contains the nutritional value of each fruit right Fine. Let's see a good example to uh, be more specific here. So you have six fruits, right? So one, one, two, two, three, three, right? These are the category of fruit, right? We have three categories of fruit, right? One. Now. Yes, we have three. Huh? So of this set, the nutrition value are twenty and ten, right? For two is ten and minus ten. For three is minus ten, minus ten, right? So now you go and you you eat what is your only option to eat one fruit of each variety, correct? So from this variety, what do you eat? Oh, Which one? Twenty. Twenty one. Okay. Here you eat ten, obviously, and here you vote it because eating anything will reduce the nutritional value. Yes. Here in the modern times, we don't have nutrition, and no one wants to reduce the nutritional values. So here I have to read twenty plus ten, thirty, right? The question is quite obvious, right? So we can just have a yeah. mapping, right? In the uh, mapping, map we can of store... int, comma, vector. Uh, uh, or... Yeah, and uh, we can have a specific uh, map, okay? Map of int, comma, int, okay? Yeah. What we do? Okay. Uh, and here we store the maximum value, right? By default, uh, it will be max, zero. Uh, maximum. By yeah, default, yeah. it will be zero because we won't take any nutrition which is negative, right? It's better to avoid it. Avoiding means having zero nutrition from that variety of fruit, right? So we can just iterate on the map and we can store, right? So like, uh, yeah. So in this case, if you see, that should be zero. Got it? Understood? So I think you can do this question, right? Yes. Yeah. Like right? we, we can store in A and B vector, right? And then we can iterate for i one to n, right? Uh-huh. And what we have to do? M I of i is equal to max of m of i comma this m value m of a of i comma this b of i correct? Okay. In this, yeah, this will do your work correct. So yeah, and now after what you have to iterate on the map, right? It Ah, uh, for us, uh, or we can, yeah, ha, uh, bad matrix number. We trade on the map, and we we can have a sum, right? Even sum equal to zero. Zero. It trading on the map for our auto. What sum plus equal to? I three dot. We can also do update the sum in this iteration only. What? I uh, don't know. We can update the sum in this iteration also if we uh, subtract the previous max one and add the new max one uh-huh. like that. Um, you know, simply it would be better to yeah, uh, correct. Uh, it's better if you do it right. So yeah, this is a simple code here, right? You can make a map. You can iterate on the map and show this thing, and then you can iterate on the map and add it to your answer. Correct. A simple question, no doubt, should be here. Moving on to the next question. So here, okay, fine. Let's discuss this quickly. Uh, this question again says, uh, three magicians walk into a bar. The bartender asks, "It was everyone want a beer?" One appears. I don't know. Two says, "I don't know." Three says, "Yes." Right. Now coming to the actual problem, n magicians number one to n walk into a bar. You are given a binary string. Okay, one and only if that one part is the person to fight. Now the logicians don't want the string S. Each one only knows whether they themselves want a beer. Okay, so basically they don't know what others want, right? They know about themselves. This is the statement meaning, I believe. They are also perfected logicians, correct? And hence, you can extract information from oh. hearing what the perfect logicians require. Okay, the bartender asked him, "Does everyone want a beer?" Predict what will be the reply for addition one to n if the reply in the 
can answer surely that whether everyone wants it or not obviously see here three answers right uh, idk yes yes correct? or no now when will be the answer be yes okay yes can be answered by only the last one because he knows about the status of everyone ha uh, okay now he knows the status of everyone so what he can do he can okay, and what when will you say yes when he see that the well, dash trick is 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 yeah okay. and no one and yeah. the string is 0 0 no, no anyone can say if 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 the if the prefix has a zero right if the prefix has a zero but he does not know whether re or the, the upcoming is also the want or not i think no also only the last one can say ki surely no no see here see let's say the string is 0010 0, 0, okay so if you ask uh-huh. him does everyone want to be a what will you say no because he doesn't want so he knows about himself right so no one wants to be if not everyone doesn't want to be right so here one thing we can say right once you get an answer no then every answer will be no ah uh, correct so what is our uh, conclusion when we okay now you have to answer what you have to iterate over string right for a one to one right uh, uh, and uh, and just if the string is one correct your answer you uh, do idk because you don't know about a attached string right If you get an answer no, like if it trick is zero, right? That means he doesn't want, right? And from here, no one wants, right? So no, every answer. And if the trick is totally one, right? Entirely one, then answer last one will be yes. Got the cases? Until we are getting s of i equal to one. Until we get s of i equal to one, right? We will print I don't know because we don't know about the entire. I don't know. Answer, correct. Okay, ah, and yeah. if the entire string is having one, then last one we say yes. Yeah, last. But if there is yes. a zero in the entire string, right? Anywhere. So until Anywhere. the zero comes up, we will print I don't know, and from there we will print no. Ah, that is true. is it clear yes how we Okay, yeah. So this question, right? You are given an array. Okay, fine. We have an array of n ten, correct? Uh, containing positive integer. An index i is said to be cursed if a one to sub two this is great. Okay, fine. If the prefix sum is greater than the current value, right? Then that index i is to be cursed, right? You can rearrange a as you wish to find the minimum possible. Okay, you you got the question, right? We want the entire. Uh, minimum number of uh, cursed arrays, cursed indexes. I mean,
ओके ओके क्वेश्चन इज क्लियर राइट वी हैव टू रीअरेंज द एरर्स सच ए मैनर दैट वी हैव द मिनिमम नंबर ऑफ कर्स इंडेक्सेस राइट ओके फाइन Okay, let's say we have the array. This one four two one eight. See, let's say we don't arrange the array, correct? The array is in this format, right? So, how many cursed indexes are there, right? The first index is the first. The first index is cursed or no? Ah. Uh, when will be an index be cursed? When the prefix sum is uh, greater than? Ah, uh, cursed. Eh? If uh, not cursed, not cursed. First index is not cursed. If it's greater than, it is greater than. than Equal to one. It is given that AI is greater than okay, equal so to one. Okay, so this is the else else the question was easy, right? We can arrange the array in the ascending order, obviously. Ascending order. Because if we arrange the in the ascending order, that will be the best case, right? Where we have minimum number of cursed indexes. But the question says if the index is one, it's always not cursed. That that's never cursed, right? That is never cursed, right? Okay, let's say here we have one. Let's say the array is four to one. Right? Let's say now this four, right? So here if the sum is zero, right? Is zero greater than four? No, right? No. So index four is not cursed. Not cursed. It's a good one. Not cursed. Now let's go to this index, right? So here the sum is four, right? Let's enter into this index is cursed. Then this one one. This index is always not cursed, right? So here we have one, in this arrangement we have one cursed index, correct? Let's arrange in some other manner. Two, one, four, one, right? Ah, uh, uh, one is why is one not cursed? The question is right. Only, only index one is not cursed. No, no, no. If in particular, if AI is greater than one, right? Means that the index one is okay. Okay, for this one, right? Only, uh -huh. only index one is not will be not cursed. Wait, in particular, AI is greater than equal to one. Means that index one is always not. What did you understand by this statement exactly? In particular, AI of I greater than equal to one means that index one is always not cursed. Okay, so basically, uh, this is by obvious, right? Index one uh, won't ever be cursed, right? Yeah. So in that arrangement, we had how many cursed indexes? Let's say if we have two, four, one. So we have this is not cursed, right? This is not cursed, right? Not, this is cursed, cursed, correct? This is cursed. Right. Let's say one, two, four. No, this is again not cursed. This is. Not, not cursed. cursed. This is again not cursed. This is the best where we have all the possibilities. Right? This is I think quite uh -huh. easy. If we arrange in the ascending order, I believe, right? Always uh -huh. we have a arrangement which is not cursed. That's the best possible arrangement, right? Uh -huh. Always like because in, why? Uh, uh, yes, ask. Ah, uh, ascending is the best, but we have to find the minimum moves also. So see, if we arrange A B C D, right? Let's say any random index we consider. Let's say E. So E won't be cursed when E is Less than equal to e is less than e, right in ascending e will be greater than equal to d only so it will never be cursed. So in the ascending order, right? At least ah. that's the best arrangement because if here ah. in the best case, what we can have that here e, each index should be less than e. First of all, here each index should be less than e. So that means that's a possibility that the sum will be. That is, some will be less than e. Else, we don't have any possibility, correct? Uh -huh. If all the indexes have values which is less than that particular value of that index, then there's a possibility we can get some benefit, right? Else, it's never possible because if we have any, if we have f here, right? Let's say then f is equal to greater than e. Entire sum will be always greater than e. Then it will always be cursed, correct? Yes. Getting? So that's uh -huh. why. That's the best thing you can do. You can arrange the ascending order. If you arrange the ascending order, then you can get the best possible answer, right? And if the question asks you how many indexes are cursed, that's very easy, right? 
you are raised in the ascending order correct uh -huh. so a better is zero right A is written zero, so this is not good. Then you can just take a sum, right? And you can keep on adding them, right? You are here. So, sum is greater than C. Then you can say sum is greater than C. Then you can say this is good. So, we can keep a running sum. And in each index, you can say the current sum value is greater than that value. That index is cursed, or it's, it's not cursed, correct? Got it? Uh, I think this sounds easy. This was an easy question. Simple arrangement in ascending order, correct? We do not have to do it in minimum moves. Okay. Any, we can do it any number of moves. I mean, possible swaps. Okay, rearrange. Okay, okay. You got it right because that's very obvious, right? Ah, uh -huh. uh -huh. okay, okay, fine. So, next question here, okay, let's try this one also. Have you seen Bob play a game? Okay, this is a gaming question, fight. Have you seen Bob play a game of array A of size and fight? I use moves first and then turn certain and fight. Okay, have you also has with another array B and easy empty fight? On Ajish turn, he chooses an element that remains in A, deletes it from A, and appends it to B. Fine. On Bob's turn, he chooses an element that remains in A and deletes it. Okay, so basically, it's very easy, right? We have an array, right? And in each turn, they are choosing certain element and they are removing it from A. But Ajish chooses it in B, but Bob doesn't do that. That's it, right? Ajish must ensure B always remains sorted. This is also clear, right? You are given a parameter S at either 0 or 1. If S is equal to 1, I has further option to skip or turn as many times as she likes. Okay. So that Bob isn't allowed to skip his turn. Fight. I wish score is defined as follows. If I is unable to make a move at any point, the score is 0. Note that. This can only happen when s equal to zero, but appending an any element from a to b would cause it. Okay, what did you understand here? Are you understanding? I'm sorry, I'm getting a bit of cold today, so a bit inactive, but yeah. So this question is what? If S is equal to 1, Avis is for the option to skip button as many times as she makes, right? Now if Avis is unable to make a move at some point of time, that means the array is over, right? That's the only case I Or when can it Avis move? Let's say array B is what? Let's say array B is 3, okay? And now array A contains what? 1, 2, right? Now, can Navish choose only one element? No, it's not possible because whatever element she chooses, right? She has to append it here. And if she appends any element here, the, this B should always be sorted. That's the criteria of the question. B should always be sorted. B won't be sorted, right? So, in this case, Navish cannot choose any element. So, yeah, that is, yeah, this is the case they are talking about, right? Navish is unable to make a move at some point of time. That is zero. Note that this can only happen when s equal to 0. Obviously, because if s is equal to 1, I just can't skip button. You're getting my point? Oh, L. L Otherwise, if a, a, if a is empty in the end, I just score is the sum of the score of elements in B. Fine. Okay. So, okay. This is the question is clear, right? The simple task is you have to choose elements one by one from element a, array A and append it to B, right? Bob won't do this thing, I just won't do this thing. And I just want to maximize her score. What's her score? It's the sum of all the elements in array B, correct? Now you have to make sure that uh -huh. the array B is always shorted while you do this process. And what can I just uh -huh. do if, if I just cannot choose any element from the array, right? 
Right. 
Tajesh Tajesh will be the sum of four sorted elements, right? Now, what cases are possible? Let's uh, let's say I I just assume that I will take these four elements, right? So with, but I just cannot take because if I I just take six, Bob will take twenty, right? Now I just choose nine, Bob will choose thirteen. Now I just cannot make any move because one, two, four are left. It's not possible. Right? You getting my point? In order to maximize the score, what should I just do? Always I tell. It's, it's, I will tell you that always I should choose this one, four, nine. That that's the only case possible. Is it correct? Think on it. Ah, one, one, four, nine. See, Achha. let's say, ha, let's, ha, say ha, ha. let's say I will choose this one, right? Then who will choose one? Because Bob is very clever. He will never choose one, right? At the end, one will remain, and then it has to be chosen by someone or the other. You're getting my point. So, one has to go in under. What one has to go with? I just always okay. right? so I just have to choose one in the initial right. Let's say I just choose one right. Now what will Bob do? Bob will choose the maximum right. How common uh -huh. this is. Then what should I just do? He should choose the minimum right because Bob will always avoid the minimum right. I just choose two again. Bob will take again the maximum to minimize the score right. And I just uh -huh. choose four. Bob will choose nine. I just choose six. So. Always with the array sizes all right. What will be the answer? Sum of the first n by two elements, n plus one by two elements. Sum of n plus one by two elements. Correct. And that's the only option possible because in any case you cannot leave any smaller element. If you leave a aside any smaller element, it will be taken by you at the end, and you cannot take so your answer will be zero. Ah. Oh. We have to only maximize uh, Alice's score. It yeah, should so, be less. It it can be less than Bob, also. Uh, that's fine. You have to maximize uh, the score, and uh, scoring zero is better than scoring some amount, right? Uh, so the array is odd. Then we don't have any other option except to choose the uh, first n plus one by two element, right? So let's say the array is. Uh, array is different. Uh, I I I just could do certain steps. What I I just should first. Let's say I just choose two, right? So what uh, are the Bob? Bob will choose four, obviously. Right? He's very clever. Now you should choose three. Getting here, one can be left over because the last move is by Bob. Because the last move is by. If L Y Alice uh, did not choose four in the in starting. Let's say okay. Let's say Alice chooses four. Okay. Then what will Bob choose? Tell me. Three. Then can I choose any element because array B should be always sorted order. The question says array. Yeah, L A O. Oh, okay, L A B. Ha ha. So okay. it's it. I just has no option except to choose the. Okay, okay. Because here the element choosing is fixed because if the array size is even, uh -huh. right? So I just know since okay. no one can skip any turn, I have to okay, choose okay. four by two two elements. Uh -huh. That's final. Right? We cannot alter here. So if I just uh -huh. know she will choose two element. Now, in she should choose in such a order that is compatible. So, if I just choose two, right? Then Bob will choose at the four, right? Then I just choose three. So one will be taken by Bob. No other option. And had the array been one to three, right? If the array been one to three, then I just cannot choose two and three. Why? Because if I just choose two, Bob will choose three, and one one has to be taken by Alice, and I just cannot take one, right? So I just choose huh. two. So no, it's understand. better to take one. Because if the array size is odd, the advantage I use. The the advantage Bob has is the last move is of Alice, so Bob, Bob can use the smallest element for the Alice, and Alice can put the smallest element to the front of Array B. So in that case, Alice has to be very careful choosing the smallest element. So let's say uh -huh. the Array is one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, right? So what will be the answer? The sum of these four. So the option you have, right? And if the question has one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, then what will be the answer? Two, three, five, seven. Then I just can leave the smallest element for Bob at the end, right? They getting my point? Let's ah, take another example. S S is zero, basically. Ah, ah. Only for the case when S equal to zero. What? Zero zero zero. Ah, oh, right. This is what will be the answer. Here the answer will be the sum of one two. Uh, Not two. one two. Only only two, right? Two. Because ah. Even, even I just will leave the first element, right? Here, we have ten one two, right? So, what can I just do? I just can 
short time if I do ten, then I just can choose the first two elements, right? You know, in the case of what, right? Here also we have four elements. I just can choose the middle two elements, right? Fine. So what we have here? Getting my point? Simple. First sort the array. Check if the array is odd. Then the sum of first n plus one by two elements, right? Then if the array is even, the sum of all the elements n by two elements of the giving the first element, right? That's it. A B C D E F. The answer will be what? B C D. Getting my point? Ah. Okay. Now think for the case when S equal to one. I will be back in a minute. Just think of the case when S equal to one. Okay, so I think I give enough time for all of you to think. So, were you able to think any alternative here? What should we do? B uh, uh, is equal to one, then uh, one alternative is E. Hum. See, when S is equal to one, what are the complications you are having, right? You can, you can, uh, the real limit, right? And you can leave, uh, like, uh, when S is equal to one, let's say we discuss this case, okay? When S is equal to one, uh, see here what our. What was the case? Right? Here it was fixed that you have to choose if the array is ten, you have to choose five elements at any cost, right? Now if the array is equal to one, uh. that's not compulsory that you have to choose five elements. You can choose three, you can choose four. It's your wish, right? This is the first advantage which you get, right? So that's and then we can uh, detail maximize our uh, if in the well, S is zero, maybe we were taking starting from the lowest values in sorted order. But we're here we can also start from like yeah. instead of two we can choose four or let's discuss or a, yes, okay. Let's discuss this case. Okay. Now here, see if S was zero, we have only option that we can choose four elements at max, right? If you have to choose four elements at max, we have to our answer was one two three one because that's the only case possible. Now in, uh -huh. in this case, let's discuss right. In this case, it it totally dependent on us how many elements we choose. It's not compulsory to choose four elements. If we get a good score by choosing three elements, we choose three elements. You're getting a point. Uh -huh. Now here one thing, right? Let's say we decide on choosing three elements. Okay. Uh -huh. so just imagine if we choose three elements. Let, let's say, let's say now tell me which three elements should you choose? You want to choose five six elements. Uh -huh. You want to choose, but that's not practically possible, right? Because for choosing uh -huh. three elements, you have to make three moves. We can choose seven, five, and three. No, no, but now, 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 one more thing. See, the, your whatever element you, you choose, you have to append to array B, and the array B should always be sorted. 
हाँ तो थ्री अच्छा ओके हाँ ठीक है ठीक है नाउ इट्स इजी वेरी इजी नाउ यू थिंक अमित वी गेट आंसर यू गिविंग वन मिनट ओके I think we we uh, we have enough for time to discuss it. So we, if we choose three elements, correct? Now choose three. Say, what elements can we choose? If we just say we choose. Now what three are three elements? We can. Is it possible for us to choose four, five, six? No, no four, five, six is not possible. Three, three. Okay, now four, five, six is not because see we are sure that if we choose three elements, right? Then Bob will have. Let's say we choose one, Bob will choose one. We choose another, Bob will choose another. Then we choose a third element, right? So in choosing three elements, Bob will have two moves, correct? This is for sure, right? If we choose three elements, how many moves will Bob have? Two moves, correct? Two. Now, if Bob has two moves, he is very clever. He will always choose the biggest two elements, right? He will always choose the Biggest two element. Then what is our answer? If we choose three element, three four five, correct? Yes. How much? Well, three four five. Uh. Yeah. Now let's say if we choose two element, okay? If we decide to choose two elements, then we will choose how many elements? One element. So what will we choose? Seven. Seven. So our answer will be seven. Now let's say if we choose one element, if we decide to choose one element. Then that then we Bob will choose how many zero, so we we'll choose what seven. Correct. You getting my point? Uh, let's say we decide on choosing four elements. Then what will be the answer? One two three four. One two three four. Now so what is the best? This is the best answer. Getting my point? So here we should iterate on each case. We should iterate on each case. Each case. So let's we start with the best case, right? When we have the maximum number of elements. Let's say this case. What are the maximum elements we can have? Four. Four, right? So what what yes. what what what's our case? One plus two plus three plus four is ten, right?
right? Dead ten, right? Now, if it is having using three elements, then we remove this one, uh. right? Which one? First two we remove, and we choose this one, right? So, three, four, five. Let's do that, correct? Now, if it is having using two elements, we remove this three, four, right? And we add this. Uh. Yeah. And if we decide to one element, we choose this one and remove this two. So what's our option? We always choose one element in the forward Excellent. and remove two in the backward. Correct? Huh. And we have a variable called maximum, which we should answer, right? Getting a point. Again, let's discuss in the end what to call. If S is equal to zero, one, right? One, two, three, four, five. 6, 9, 11, 13, okay. Let's see, we have one more. 1, 1, okay. Now tell me. So, total element is? Okay, how many elements we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 6, 7, okay, let's remove this one, okay. Nine, uh, eight, nine elements, eight right? Eight elements. 9, 9, huh. Yes, 9. Okay, yeah. Okay, so what we do here? So again, how we charge it? Using how many elements? We'll start with five, five. elements. So choosing first five, right? Our sum is how much? Choosing. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Now what? Moving ahead. This is four element, right? So I'll also do this four, right? We remove these two and we add this. So 15 plus 6 is 21, minus 3 is 18, right? Okay. Now, moving ahead, we choose this 9 and we remove this 3, 4, right? Now, some will be how much? 20, correct? Moving ahead, we choose 11 and we remove this 2, right? It's again 20, correct? Moving ahead, we choose 13 and we remove this 2, or it's 30. How much correct, answer is? Correct. 20. Not how to do. You can take a running sum, add one in the beginning, and remove two from the end, right? Uh -huh. Sliding window type. Yeah. This is a good right. And now, this, for the, this was for the case when we have odd elements. So, what for even? For even, we can choose a from an I plus all of from the second order. Right. See here. Let's say we have even. Let's, let's discuss, right? So, our uh, maximum we can choose four elements, right? Hmm. Okay, if we choose four elements, we choose this four, right? Yeah, we choose this let's four. Let's say we, have, we choose three elements, okay? Now, when we have three options, then Bob has two options, right? So, Bob will choose which Obviously, this is level 13, right? So, it's like the same case, right? If we see that we don't have one. We consider we don't have one. This one is the same, right? If we don't have one, then the same thing, right? Is 17 correct? Then we move this to, we add this, right? It's the same matter, correct? You're getting my point. It's 19. Uh -huh. We move this to, we add this to 20. Again, we remove 13. So our measure is 30. It's the same case, right? Because we start with two here. Because since we have even element, the last element will always be taken by Bob. We give it for Bob. Because at the end, he has the option to choose. At the end, we don't have to choose that. Bob has to choose the last element for one. Bob, okay? So it's the same case where we don't have the first element, right? Oh. Got it? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, clear, clear, clear. Got it, right? So if you can summarize uh, at least, it will be better. How to solve? Uh, so, uh, in S, the case of S is equal to 0, it is clear that we will choose the starting, sorting ele sorted elements in case of odd, and in case of even, we will start from the second uh, smallest one in case of S is equal to 0. But when S is equal to 1, what we have to do is, we will 
for example, if the size is of array is 10, we can choose at best six elements. So we will choose the smallest six elements in case of odd, and then we will iterate for each case. We will choose six elements, then store an answer, then five elements, then store an answer, and so on, and see which one is the best. Uh, and in case of events, similarly, we will start with the second lowest value because uh, we can skip that. So again, we will do for n is equal to 6, then n is equal to 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, like that. Was it clear? Okay. Just quite clear, right? This was a very good question where we choose some elements and append it to B. Since we have to append to the increasing order, we have to see the increasing order. Right? And in the case when S equal to zero, we are bound to choose the first n by two element, right? And in the case when n s is not we so we have a dynamic option, so we take a, a dynamic running window, right? Set the max is correct. Uh, right. Question. And this was the like. <laughs> <laughs>